Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Dell Technologies World 2019. Brought to you by Dell Technologies and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back everyone's Cube's live coverage, day three, wrap up of Dell Technologies World 2019. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante, and Stu Miniman on set one, we got the set two over there, blue set, white set, we got a lot of content. It's been a Cube cannon, guys, a, a cannon of content firing into the digital sphere. Great guests, we had all the senior executive players, tech athletes at Dell Technology World, Michael Dell, Tom Sweet, Marius Haas, Howard Elias, we've had Pat Gelsinger, CEO of VMware on, the key partner in the family there of Dell Technology World, and we've had the client guys on who do Alienware, as well as the, the laptops and the power machines. Um, we've had the, the Power Edge guys on, we talked about Hollywood. It's been a great run, but Dave, it's been 10 years, Stu. Remember the first Cube event we ever went to was EMC World in Boston. The chowder there, we had, and what was the, what was the slogan of, of the, that show? Journey to the private cloud. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that was the slogan. Journey yeah. to the private cloud. That was 2010. Well, in 2010, it was cloud, 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 cloud. 2019, it's all cloud. <laughs> now, the, the difference is, back then it was like fake cloud and made up cloud and really was no substance to it. We really started to see, Stu, especially something that we've been talking about for years, which is substantially mimicking the public cloud on-prem. Now, I know there are those who would say, no, 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 no. Andy Jassy probably being one of those. That's not cloud. So there's still that dichotomy. Is it cloud? Well, D Dave, if I could jump in on that, one of the things that's really interesting is when VMware made that partnership with AWS, it was the ripple through this ecosystem. Oh, what's that mean for Dell? You know, VMware and Dell not working together. Well, they set the model and they started rolling out in VMware and they took the learnings that they had and they're bringing that data center as a service down to the Dell environment. So it's, it's funny, I always, we always hear, you know, AWS, they're learning from their partners, they're listening and everything like that. Well, you know, Dell and VMware, they've been listening, they've been learning too in this, and it, it brings into a little bit of equilibrium for me, that partnership, and right, Dave, as you said, you know, there used to be that cloud washing discussion, and, and today it's, you know, we're talking about stacks that live in AWS and Google and Microsoft, and now in, yeah. you know, my hosted or service provider or you know, my own data center, if that makes sense. I mean, if you want to just simplify the high order bit, Dave, on cloud, it's simply this. Amazon's trying to be enterprise, everyone in the enterprise is trying to be Amazon, right? And so what, the, what that basically means is, it's all cloud, it's all a distributed computer system. Okay, Scott McNeely had it right, the network is the computer. If you look at what's going on here, the traditional enterprise vendors over decades of business model and technology, you know, had full stack solutions from mainframe, mini computers to PC, the local area networking, all cobbled together. IT wires it up, creates application services. All that is completely being decimated by a new way to roll out storage, computing, and networking. It's the same stuff. It's just being configured differently. Throw on massive compute power with cloud and Moore's Law and data and AI, you have a, a changing of the, of the architecture. But at the end of the day, the cloud is an operating model of distributed computing. If you look at all the theories and theses of, of computer science do and networking, all those paradigms are actually playing out in, in the cloud, everything from AI, AI in the 80s and 90s, you got distributed networking and computing, but it's all one big computer. And Michael Dell, who was the master of the computer industry, building PCs, looks at this probably like it's one big computer. You got a processor and subsystems, so you know, this is what's interesting. Amazon has done that. And if they try to be like the enterprise, like the old way, they could fall into that trap. So if the enterprise stays in the enterprise, they know they're not going to be well. So I think it's interesting how you see the enterprise trying to be like Amazon, Amazon trying to be like the enterprise. So at the end of the day, whoever can build that system that's scalable, the way I think Dell's doing is great, ours only scalable, using data for specialists. So it's a distributed computer, that's all that's going on in the world right now, and it's changing everything, open source software is there. All that makes it completely different, and it's a huge opportunity. Whoever can crack the code on this, it's in the trillions and trillions of dollar total adjustable market. Well, in, in 2010 we said that, we, we, we noted the gap, there's still a gap between what Amazon can do and what the on-prem guys can do. And we'd argue, is it five years, is it seven years, maybe 10 years, whatever it is. But at the time we said, if you recall, look it, they got to close the gap, it's got to be good enough for IT to buy into it. And I think we're starting to see that, but my view, it's still not cloud. 
It doesn't have the scale of cloud, it doesn't have the economics cloud, and when you peel the onion, it, does, it certainly doesn't have the SaaS model and the consumption model of cloud nowhere close yet. Well, and you know, here's the drumbeat of innovation that we see from the public cloud. You know, where we at the, sh at the show this week, the public cloud, cloud providers, how many announcements that they probably had? Sure, there was a mega launch of announcements here, but the public cloud is just that regular cadence of there. You know, public cloud CICD, we're not quite there yet in this kind of environment. It's still, what, what Amazon would say is, you put this in an environment and it's kind of frozen. Well, it's thawed some, and it's now, we can get data center service, consumption model is something we can go, we're shifting in that model, it's easier to update things, but you know, how do I get access to the new features? But yeah. we're seeing that blurring of the line. I can start moving services, that hybrid nature of the environment. We've talked a few times, we've been digging into that hybrid cloud taxonomy and some of those services to span because it's not public or private, it's now truly that hybrid and multi environment and, and, and customers and, are going to live in and, all and of the these And the question, pieces. John, is is it good enough to hold serve? Well, I think the reality is, is that if you go back to 2010, the journey of the private cloud, it took enterprises almost 10 years to figure out that it's real. And I think in that time frame, Amazon has absolutely leveled everybody. We call it the tsunami. Microsoft quickly figures out that they got to get cloud. They come in there, got a fast follower second. Google's trying to retool. Oracle, I think, missed the boat completely. You got Alibaba and IBM in there. So you got the whole cloud game happening. The problem with the enterprises is that I, there's no growth in terms of old school enterprise other than reconsolidate and position for cloud. My question to you guys is, is there going to be true, true growth in the classic enterprise business or will all this SaaS run on cloud? So yes, if it's multi-cloud or even hybrid for the reasons they talk about, that's not a lot of growth compared to what the cloud can offer. So again, I still haven't seen, Dave, the visibility in my mind that on-premises growth is going to be massive compared to cloud. Look, I mean, I think cloud is where SaaS lives. I think that's where the scale lives. We, and, and how much scale can you do with consolidation? We are in a prolonged bull market that's, that started in 2010, and it's gone on. We're in a tenth year of a, of a, a decade of bull market. The enterprise market is cyclical, and it's you know at some point you're going to start to see a slowdown. Cloud. I mean, it's just a tiny little portion of the market. It is going to continue to gain share. Cloud can grow in a downturn. Well, the, well, well, well the, no, but, the, Dell, but Dell pointed out on this, Michael Dell pointed out on the Cuban so as, as his lieutenants. The IT is, the consolidation of IT is just a, is a retooling to be cloud ready operationally. That's where hybrid comes in. So I think that realization has kicked in. But as enterprises aren't like, they're not like Google and Facebook. They're not really that fast. So, so they got to kind of get their act together on premises. That's why I think in the short term, this consolidation and new re revitalization is happening because they're retooling to be cloud ready. That is absolutely happening. But to say that's the massive growth, it's due, I don't you know. No, look, as Dave's pointed out, the way that there is more than the market growth is by gaining market share. Share there shift. There are yeah. areas where Dell and EMC didn't have large environment. You know, I spent 10 years at EMC. I was a networking guy. It was mostly storage networking, some WAN connectivity for replication like SRDF and the like. Today, at this show, I talked to a lot of the telco people, talked to the service providers, talked where the SD-WAN, the NYSERA, some of these pieces, they're really starting to do networking. That's the area where that software defined, not SDN, but the OEM partnership with companies like Big Switch, they're getting into that market and they have such small market share there that there's huge up, uh, uh, uplift to be able to dig into the giant in okay, that space. Okay, couple questions. What percent of Dell's 91 billion today is multi-cloud revenue? <laughs> Great question. Okay, what <laughs> percent? I mean, very small. Okay, very small. Zero. Okay. And, and is that multi-cloud revenue all incremental growth? Or, or is it going to cannibalize the existing base? These are the, well, these mean, are the fundamentals well, we, well, we had, of the cyclical well, market that well, I'm talking well, to, about. To get into this, you love the, the financial conversations. We had Tom Sweet on, the CFO. Okay, he nailed this. He said there's multiple levers to shareholder uh, growth. Pay down the debt, check, he's got to do that. You, you love that conversation. Margin expansion, get the margins up. Use the client business to pick, cover costs, as you said. Increase go-to-market efficiency and, and leverage the supply chain. That's like their core focus right now. And throw cash, and that all leads okay, to cash. Okay, one thing he said that was mind-blowing to me is that no one gets the valuation of how valuable Dell Technologies is. They're throwing off close to $7 billion in free cash flow. Free cash flow. Okay, so you can talk margin expansion all you want, that's great, but they've got this huge cash flow coming in. 
You can't, well, you can't go out of business by when, running it. Listen, you don't run out of cash. When the, market, when the market is good, these guys are, are in as good a position as anybody, and I would argue better position than anybody. The question on the table that I'm asking is how long can it last? And if and when the market turns down, and markets are always cyclical, we're like, again, we're in the 10th year of a bull market. I mean, well, it's somewhat if, unprecedented. If, if, Dell, if Dell can use the war chest of the free cash flow, check on these levers that they're talking about here, they're going to have the leverage to go in during the downturn and then be the cost uh, optimizer well, for, really great for customers. So right now they're going to be taking their medicine, creating this one common operating environment, which they have an advantage because they have all the puzzle pieces. Hewlett Packard Enterprise doesn't have, they have gaping holes in the end to end, they can't address it. So that you is know. a really good point that you're making now. So then the next question is, okay, if and when the downturn comes, who's going to take advantage of it? Who's going to come out stronger? I think Amazon yeah. is going to be continue to dominate, and as long as they don't fall into the enterprise trap of trying to be too enterprising, continue to operate their way for enterprises, I think Jassy's got that covered. I think Dell Technologies is perfectly positioned to leverage the, the, um, the cash flow and their thing to do that. I think Cisco's got a great opportunity, and I think that's something that you, know, you don't hear a lot talk about VMware Cisco war happening, but Cisco has a network. They have a developer ecosystem just starting to get revitalized. That's an opportunity, yeah, so. I got thoughts on Cisco too, but one of the things I want to say about Dell being able to come out of that stronger, I, t I, I keep saying, I've said this a number of times and asked a lot of questions this week, is the PC business is vital for Dell. It's almost half the company's revenue, maybe not quite, but it, it's where the company started, and it, Dave, it sucks up a lot of corporate overhead. If Hewlett Packard did not spin out HPE and HP, they would be in the game, I think. Spinning that out was a huge mistake. I wrote about it publicly, took a lot of heat for it, but you know, I try to go along with the HPE focus. Dell has proven bigger is better. HP has proven that smaller is not as leveraged. Wow. And if they had the PC, they'd be, have the mojo in gaming, they had the mojo in the edge, and Dell's got all this leverage to cross-pollinate the front end and edge into the back end common cloud operating environment. That is going to be an advantage, and that's going to be something that we'll see well, how let that's going to play let me, out. Let me, counter what you just said, uh, uh, I agree, you know, the, the spin up, but the autonomy was the big mistake. Once HP bought autonomy, you know, what Meg did was almost a fait accompli, they never should have bought autonomy. It wasn't Meg, it was Leo Apotheker. He was no, the, but, he was the but, but she inherited that bag of rocks, and then, what are you going to do with it? Okay, so that's why they had a spin out, and, and it did create shareholder value. If they had not purchased autonomy, then it would have been term. in much better shape not to split it up and, and, and they would be a much yeah, stronger competitor now. They had shareholder pop, they had a pop on value, people made some cash, but the long game, I think that kind of well, hurt HP them. Well, HP Inc. has actually done pretty well for, for shareholders. As a, so, as a standalone PC company. But, so, I, but I, again, I think Dell, with that leverage, assuming PCs, it's going to be really interesting. I don't know as much about that market, you were loving that PC conversation, yeah. but the whole, you know, the new gamer markets and, and the new way to work, they, they're throwing an edge in there, I don't know, is edge? The PC and Edge, well, is that sort well, of peanut and, butter? And so the, the, big thing that Michael really? De, my, the big thing Michael Dell said on theCUBE was we're not a conglomerate, we're an integrated company, and when you have an integrated company like this with the tech, the tech landscape shifting to their advantage, you have the ability to cross-subsidize. So the strategy game, if Matt Baker was here, we'd be talking about, okay, I can cross-subsidize margin, you even brought it up on the client side. Smaller margins, but it pays a lot of the corporate overhead. Oh yeah, absolutely. So then you've got higher Fair margin business. EMC business, which you know those margins, that's contributing. And so when you have this new configuration, you can cross subsidize and move and shift. So I think that's a great advantage. I think that's undervalued in the marketplace. And I think, you know, I think Dell stock price is well undervalued. You point out the numbers, they got VMware in there. The question is, at what point does VMware blink and go all in on Dell Technologies, Stu? Or, because remember, Pat Kessler's got a partner. You don't think the phone was ringing off the hook at, in, in Palo Alto from their partners? What, what's this Azure deal? So VMware's got to be the neutral party. It's a big problem, big opportunity. Well, look, if I'm a traditional, historical partner of VMware, it's not the Azure announcement that has me a little bit concerned because all of them partner with Microsoft too. It is how tightly combined Dell and VMware are. EMC always kept them at arm's length, now they're in the same. It's like, Dave, they're blending it. It's like, you know, Dell, from a market cap standpoint, gets 50 cents uh, on the dollar. VMware is a software company and they get their multiples. Dell is not a software company, but VMware well, and Pivotal are. Well, if we can blend that a little bit, maybe we can get that market cap up. Is it too blended? 
Uh, no, no, I think the strategy is absolutely right on. You have to go hard with VMware and, and, and use it as a competitive weapon. But Stu, to your point, 50 cents a dollar, it's actually much worse than that. I mean, the number is, if you take out VMware, right. the VMware ownership, you take out the, the, the core debt, and, and you look at the market value, you're left with like a billion dollars. Cordell is undervalued. Yeah. Cordell is worth more than a billion or two billion dollars, okay? So <laughs> it's a really cheap way to buy VMware, right? The, 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 Tom Sweet nailed this. He said, you know, basically, these company, the, the street's not used to tech companies having such big debt. But to your point, John, they're throwing off cash. So this company is undervalued in my view. Now there's some risks associated with that. And that's why the, the investors are penalizing them for that debt. They're penalizing them from Michael's ownership structure. You know, that's what this is, B but. I think there's a lack hey. of understanding in my opinion. I think, I think you're right. I just think they don't understand. Look at Dell and they think GE. They don't look at Dell and think distributed computing system with software filling these gaps and all that extra 10 expansion. It's legit. I think they can go after new market opportunities as, as obtuse to us as the client business. I mean, mirroring <laughs> trade-ins and, it's just, that's mass, it's trillions of dollars. So I think, I think that is a huge but deal. But I'm a bull, I'm a bull on the, on the, on the value of the company. I think there's no All question. All right guys, most important developments, Dell Technology World, what's the big story that you think is coming out of the show here? Well, it's definitely, you know, the VMware on, on Dell. I mean, that is the big story. And it's, to your point, it's Dell basically saying, we're going to integrate this, we're going to be hard, we're going to go hard. And you know, VMware on Dell is a preferred solution, no doubt. That is top for Dell. And Pat Gelsinger said it, VMware and AWS is the first and preferred solution. Those are the two primary vectors that are going to drive hard. And then, oh yeah, we'll listen to customers, whatever else you want, Google, Azure, fine, well, we're there. Well, but those two vectors, they're going to yeah, drive Dave, really I'll hard. Dave, I'll build on that because we saw VMware building out its multi-cloud strategy. And what we have today is Dell is now putting themselves in there as a first class citizen. Before it was like, oh, we're doing VxRail and NSX and you know, we'll integrate all these pieces there, but infrastructure, infrastructure, infrastructure. Now it is, it is multi-cloud, we want to see it at the big table. Right, and Jeff, Jeff Clark said, why are you doing both? Let's just, one strategy, yeah. one company, it's all one cash register as the saying goes. <laughs> yeah, I heard that before. I think the biggest story to me is something that we've been saying on theCUBE a lot, you know I've been on this rant. Horizontally scalable operating environment is the land grab and then vertically integrate with the data into applications that allow each vertical industry to leverage data for the kind of intimate uh, personalized experiences for user experiences in each industry. Whether it's oil and gas, public sector, each one has got their own experiences that are unique, the data drives that. But the horizontal end-to-end -end operating model, whether it's on-premises, hybrid, or multi-cloud, is a huge land grab, and I think that is a major strategic win for Dell, and I think as, if no one challenges them on this, Dave, if HP doesn't go on an M&A change, if HPE does not do a, M&A complete changeover from strategy and pull in, fill in their end to end, I think they're going to be really hurting. I think there's going to be a tell sign and we'll see who reacts and challenges Dell on this end to end. And I think if they can pull it off without being contested. The only thing I would say to that, grab. the only thing I would say to that, John, is you know HP you know, very well. I mean, they got a lot of loyal customers and there's a huge market out there. So, Dave, you know, it's, Dave it's, it's, economic, the economics are shifting in the new world. New use cases, new step function of user experiences. This is, this is going to be new user experiences at new economic price points. That's business model innovation. Loyal customers, that's hard to sustain. They'll keep some clutching and grabbing, but everyone will move to the better mousetrap in this scenario. So it, the, the combination of that stability with software, it's just... They say it's a big market. Yeah. So, so John, 2010, Little table, back corner, you know, of EMC. <laughs> now Dell the Technologies lounge. World, double set, beautiful set, theater of presence, a lot of things changing yeah. in the industry, but the partnership and support of this ecosystem is something that's helped us along the way. You know, um, when we started doing this, Jeff came on board, the team has been amazing. We have been growing up and getting better every show. Small incremental improvements here and there, it's been an amazing production, an amazing team all around us. But the support of the communities do, this has been a co-creation project from day one. We love having these conversations with smart people, tech athletes, make it unique, make it organic. Let the paid stuff on, on the other literature pieces go well, but here it's about conversations for, the, for and with the community, and I think the community sponsorship has been part of funding more of it. You're seeing more cubes. Soon there'll be four sets at AWS, four sets at VMworld, four sets here, global partner sets. I mean, Stu, 
what, what have we missed? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's phenomenal. Uh, you know, we are at a unique time in the industry and honored to be able to help document it with, with the two of you and the whole team. Dave, Howard Elias sitting there, giving him some uh, kind of a victory lap because we've been, he's been with us for 10 years. He's been the, one of the co-captains of the integration. He deserves a lot of credit. Yeah, Howard has had an amazing career. I, I met him like literally decades ago and he has always taken on the really hard jobs. I mean, that's I think part of his secret success. Because it's like, he took on the integration. He took on the services business at, at EMC. You remember, Stu, when Joe Tucci said, we're a product company, not a services company. I was like, give me services. I'll Pat take Gelsinger that. Pat it, Gelsinger has been on theCUBE 10 years, Dave. Pat, uh, he, was, he was drawn away. He was on fire this week. I thought Pat Gelsinger was phenomenal. Yeah, he's an amazing guest. Tom, Tom Sweet, you know, very strong, great Marius. great moments. What's your favorite cube moment? I'll never forget Joe Tucci. I had my little camera out, filming Joe Tucci at one of the sessions. Gives some commentary in the hallway. Well, that was at 2010, one of, uh, 2011, I think. One of my favorite 2010 moments, I go back to the first time we did the cube, was when you asked Joe Tucci, you know, why is storage sexy? <laughs> if you and remember you, that. Yeah, I do, I do. Then, <laughs> he never came on again. <laughs> <laughs> but that was a meme. If you remember, that was a cube meme. All for the next couple of years. Yeah. yeah right? Do you remember Tom George's reaction? He goes, I'm not touching that. It was so I remember funny. when we were critical of um, hybrid clouds like 2012 or 2013. I go, Pat, is a hybrid cloud a halfway house to the final destination of public cloud? Uh -huh. He goes to me, he goes, halfway house? <laughs> the interview just was like, the whole crowd was like, what did it just happen? Stu, favorite moment. Oh gosh, I mean, I mean so many here. It, John, as you said, it's just such a community. Love, you know, the, the people that we've had on for 10 years and then, you know, it took us you know, three or four years to before we had Michael Dell on, now he's a regular on our program, the luminaries we've had on, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, 2010, you know, that was actually my last week working for EMC, so Dave, thanks for popping me out, it's been a fun ride, and uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing to be able to talk to this whole community. My favorite yeah, moment was, Stu, when we were at uh, AWS, our first show, we're like, are we still alive? Hell, this James Hamilton, Andy Jesse, come on up. Very small show, now it's a monster. Dave, the, the Cube has had some good luck. Well, We've been on the right waves, and a lot of, lot of companies have sold their companies, been part of the Cube, companies went public, Unicorns, Nutanix came on early on, no one understood well, that company. What, what I'm thrilled about too, John, is we've, we're now a decade in, we're, we're documenting a lot of the big waves. One of, one of the most memorable moments for me was when you called me up and said, hey, we're doing Hadoop World in New York. I got on a plane and went out, I landed at like 2.30 in the morning, you met me, we did Hadoop World, nobody knew what Hadoop was back then, it became like the hottest thing going, now nobody talks about Hadoop. So we're seeing these waves, and theCUBE is able to document them. It's really a pleasure. The Cube Canon, we got the Cube Studios, soon to have Cube Stories, with Cube Network, Stu, Cube all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. Right, guys, thanks, it's been a pleasure doing business with you here, Dell Technologies. Shout out to Leonard, Chuck, and the team, Sonia, Gabe, everyone else. Guys, great job, excellent set, good show. Closing down, Dell Technologies World, it's theCUBE's coverage. Thanks for watching.